Okay, so I ran out of time on the beginning of the second part of the tutorial. So we're just going to continue it on here as part 2.5 of the conversion tutorial. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've converted all of my base textures into um, normal maps. Um, so every base texture now has a normal map and a specular map. The speculars um, originally came with it. We can recycle those. So let's go back into the viewer. Hit F1 to get rid of all that stuff. And take one last look. And hit F12 to reload the new textures. And there we go. So now we have a definite difference in how the viewer renders the textures. So you see you get the gloss doesn't seem to spread as far and all of these little designs have a more three-dimensional effect to them and I of course painted out all of the written inf written things and painted things so that they don't have that same appearance um, otherwise they would be really uh, they would look really low quality okay so that's it for normal textures okay so let's move on to illumination um, maps and what an illumination map does um, is it provides a color type um, to the glow so for instance the first thing we're going to do is well there's really only two things um, two textures that are responsible for glows on this model and that's for this um, the impulse intake manifold or whatever that would be called and um, the little bit of a um, viewable piece collector here on the nacelle and of course the main grill um, as you can see here they are bright so to speak I mean you can more or less determine that that is an illuminated area of the ship um, but as you see if we move the power slider up and down um, we do get an adjustment in brightness but there's no glowing effect um, which you'll see in some of the models that were included with the viewer so I'm going to show you how to uh, achieve that result and it's relatively simple so we need to find um, the texture responsible for this so we're going to start with the nacelle and that's actually the left nacelle but I think the texture refers to it as the right so open up nacelle right so here we are in Photoshop and it's pretty obvious what's what in most textures so we want uh, all of this blue to be um, the color that the nacelle will be illumin or the grill will be illuminated to um, and somewhere in there one of these red blobs is responsible for um, the abuser collector uh, openings here there's two on each nacelle so the first thing we want to do is we're gonna grab the magic wand tool because um, we want to mask off all of this blue because for the time being that's the only thing we want to salvage <coughs> So, I have my wand tolerance set to about 100, and it pretty much grabbed everything I want. Um, the higher the tolerance, obviously, the more it's going to capture. And again, this is not um, an exact science. Um, the glows are kind of a translucent effect, and you're not really going to uh, you're not going to really see a, any blemishes or sharp edges or anything silly like that. So we might as well mask off all of these blobs because we don't know specifically which one is responsible for the user collector. I think we can safely assume that one isn't responsible. It's probably this one and that one, or just that one alone. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We've masked off all of the parts that we want to have a glowing effect. So then you go into Select and Inverse that so that it inverts the selection. Grab your paintbrush tool, select your background foreground defaults so that black is at the top 
make sure your opacity for the brush is set to 100 and you can pick a fairly uh, big size we'll just go for 500 whatever it doesn't matter and just give it a quick swish over that so that's going to be responsible for the color of the glow the intensity of the glow is um, actually the responsibility of the alpha channel in the base texture um, which is this one but for the time being with what we have right now we're just gonna go ahead let's go control A copy control C to copy that go into your channels and alpha and actually we don't need to do anything here because this alpha is um, it's okay but for argument's sake sometimes there isn't an alpha channel or if you're creating your own from scratch you need to have alpha um, a copy of your um, illuminated colors in the alpha channel which is a black and white layer so we copied in there as you see the brightness kind of went down on everything and um, it's not really important uh, the illumination layer isn't going to have a great deal of effect on the amount of glow uh, but you can just um, go into your levels and you can probably bump those grays up so that they're back to white like that so if you were creating one from scratch you you just use your um, your RGB layer and copy it and paste it into your into your uh, alpha channel and we're actually going to do that later on but uh, let's just stay focused here so that's our illumination channel it's that simple so we're gonna go file save as and we're gonna name this one continuing on with our naming scheme illum you can actually name your normal maps norm and your specular maps maps spec um, you don't have to type out the entire word um, it's just a bad habit anyways so illum save and save so remember I said that the glow effect the actual the intensity excuse me of the glow is in the base texture so here we have the base texture so black is basically um, void there that, that will um, not have any glow effect anything um, in the gray to white um, will cause a glowing effect and obviously the whiter the more effect uh, the more of the glow effect is actually going to be evident as you will see here in one second <coughs> so we go back into the viewer hit F12 to reload the textures and voila look at that isn't that beautiful so there we have it we have glowing the cells and glowing fusor collectors so I'll show you what I'm talking about by the intensity of the glow so actually we've got um, actually it was a pretty good representation of the glow actually but uh, just for educational sake let's go back into our working directory here and reopen the base texture that's responsible for that go into the alpha channel take your paintbrush make sure it's set to black change the opacity to 50 percent now this is pretty drastic I would normally go like 20 25 percent when I'm um, changing my levels um, sometimes you want smaller objects like windows to not obviously have a really overbearing or blaring glowing effect if it's just a tiny little window so we're just going to take our brush hold the mouse down paint the whole picture so that it um, knocks everything down by 50 percent and then just save that go back into the viewer and when we reload the textures you're going to see the glowing effect diminish and that's because the alpha channel of the base check texture is what actually allows the, the illumination texture to come through so F12 and there so the illumination went down quite a bit and it's still not bad um, there's always like a peak distance um, that you can achieve uh, by scrolling in and out which will give you the best results obviously the farther away you move the more you lose the glow and conversely the more you move in you will lose the glow effect and there's usually a happy medium and that looks like it's probably at right about there where you benefit the most from the glow and that's still um, that's still a nice effect actually it's not uh, it's obvious without being uh, overkill and 
It's nice. I'm going to leave it like that, actually. So, one other thing. I'm going to close that texture in Photoshop. One other thing we're going to just quickly go over here is, and Mark, I think, went over this in one of his uh, Excalibur um, texture demo videos or something on YouTube. Um, and this is going to apply in the Excalibur, uh, the Evolved engine as well. And that goes to, to do with uh, the base te textures are all going to be painted so that they are completely void of any um, lighted sections. So no, in the base textures, all the windows will be black. Um, all the nacelles, uh, these are collectors, and impulse, anything like that will be colored as if it's completely powered down. Um, and then the illumination is going to be um, wholly responsible uh, for bringing life um, to those when the power is up and also the glow effect. And the same is true in the nano effects viewer. So if we go into the power levels and drop them to zero, so the glow obviously disappears. But as we pointed out earlier, I think, um, we know that warp grills generally aren't blue when they're powered down, along with other things like obviously impulse engines. Um, even though they glow red um, when the ships are powered up, they're not glowing red when the ships are powered down. They're not even, excuse me, red when the ship is powered down. They're usually a very muted, almost a brown color. The same goes for the uh, the nacelle grills. They're usually a kind of a ruddy, reddish brown color. So, in order to, to do that, you have to understand that, the, again, the base texture is responsible for um, the overall look of the ship, and every other texture base um, that you add to the base texture is an enhancement to the base texture. So we're going to go back to the base texture for this nacelle, <coughs> and before we do anything, we'll just bump the power back up to the shuttle here. Okay, so full power. So we're going to go into the RGB layer, and again, we're going to grab the wand tool, and this time we want to make sure we grab all of the blue that we can. Or, actually, let's do this in another way. Use your rectangle marquee tool, and because the other part's gray, it's not really going to be affected. Draw a quick mask around that. So you're going to go to Edit, excuse me, Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, or Control U for the keyboard shortcut and you're going to select the blue channels in here so you're going to go blues and you're going to change the hue so see how only the blue is being changed now we know that the unpowered grill colors are kind of an like i said an orangey kind of a ruddy brownish just a totally mute color so i'm just going to take this over to the red side here and then I'm going to bump the saturation down a little bit and I'm going to bump the lightness down a little bit and we're just going to move this around again just to see if we can't find okay this is the quick and dirty way of doing it the the better way of doing it would have been using the wand tool and selecting only this and then using the colorize option here but if we use the colorize option it's going to affect the gray um, base here which you can fix later but uh, this is the quick way of doing it so I think that's a pretty good color there so we're just gonna save that okay so and we know also <clears throat> that the Pizer collectors aren't red when they're powered down, so we're going to use the wand tool for this example. So just go along, click, click, click. Uh, because there wasn't a lot of gradients in here compared to this, where you've got a, it's just easier to use the wand tool quickly. Everything here is kind of just quick and dirty just to get it done. Um, you know, you can definitely take it uh, to any level you're comfortable or experienced with to get the best results. So I've um, masked off all these um, reds. So we're going to go to adjustments, hue and saturation. This time we're going to select the colorize option. And oh look, it's pretty close to what we want. So we're just going to knock the saturation down just a tickle and move the brightness down. 
to something like that just the saturation just to maintain the color we don't want to you know we don't want black and white colors because that'll look uh, I'll look a little bit silly okay so that's it for the base texture so you can go ahead and just save that so file save and save go back into nano effects viewer and we're going to reload the textures oh look no difference and that's because we have full power applied to the ship but let me zoom in here when we start to drop the power levels the base texture is going to become more and more visible as the illumination layer becomes invisible so let me bring the sun around here to show so there we go so it's not perfect but again this is a shuttlecraft you're not really going to be scoping this thing out um, you know up close and personal it's going to be buzzing around whatever your ship or your station um, but there you have it so maybe if you have a parked shuttle in your shuttle bay or in a space station and you want it to be powered down um, you would just delete the illumination layer and this is what it will look like so with an illumination layer when you bring the power levels up the illumination layer overlays on the base texture gives you your illuminated color and the glow effect so it's responsible for two different things move the sun around to get a little bit better look okay so do the same thing um, for the other side and uh, and also for the uh, the texture that's for that we'll just do one of those quickly and uh, do, do, do. I think that's on what do we do right I think that's on the pylon yeah there it is so here we have the impulse manifold or what have you and again use your wand tool pluck that and take your brush tool make sure the opacity is at a hundred percent black and invert your selection and with select inverse and just paint over everything and then go select inverse again on this particular one it has a it's a pretty washed out look um, and I, I do want to darken that a little bit um, if you look in the viewer it's it has a textured look to it but it'll actually come out very washed out being that white so just go image adjustments uh, you can use brightness contrast or you can use your hue saturation and lightness just bump the brightness down and increase the saturation and you get a little bit more of a less washed out a little more rich color so, okay so that's that um, the alpha channel should already be set as we can see there um, so we're going to file save as and name this one I L L U M and save so if we go back in here reload the textures and ta-da it came to life so there we go okay so that concludes illumination layers the next thing we're going to do real quick and I wasn't planning on doing this but we're gonna do it uh, really quick here is this canopy glass obviously is opaque and you can't see anything in it through it or against it doesn't reflect anything but there is a way to create reflections so we're just gonna do that really quick so on our top texture which is the main texture there's our windows each side and the top so we'll just zoom into those and with the wand tool W tolerance of 100 should be adequate just and make sure you're uh, the way I'm getting all these is either hold I believe it's shift or just use this add to selection option for the the wand and you can just continue just keep clicking objects and it continues the selection so I selected all the windows we're just going to minimize this. We're going to go back to the shuttles directory. And with your download, you should have got a type 6. And under its directory of textures, you will find that there are ones called effects, effects, effects. And the effects 
um, texture is responsible for two different things but we're just gonna cover one thing right now and that's the window reflection so bring that up and so here's this pink color so we're just gonna use the eyedropper to grab that pink color and then we're gonna go image invert and we're gonna switch our foreground background colors and get the green so now we have these two colors so I'm back to our top texture for our shuttle we're gonna use our fill tool or you can use the brush tool if you'd like we'll grab the, the brush tool and we're going to go we're gonna paint the windows pink and then we're gonna go select inverse we're gonna push X key and that's gonna switch our foreground background color and we're just gonna paint the rest of the model green or the rest of the texture excuse me green <clears throat> and in an effects um, texture the alpha channel needs to be white so just take your paintbrush tool again white uh, make sure that nothing selected paint the whole thing white go back in file save as and call this top underscore effects and save it go back into our model viewer and reload and I did it backwards okay so that's easy to fix you just go into Photoshop go into image adjustments invert and save so you could see what the what the effect was and it was just a reflective effect um, obviously this is applicable you know for a lot of other things other than windows if you want something to have a glossy appearance to it that's the way to do it and you can see on the window there's a little bit of a hint of a texture going on there and I'll explain that uh, in another part but not right now so hit F12 to reload the textures so we have our corrected texture and there we go so now we have nice reflective um, more natural looking glass it doesn't have an artificial matte finish that's non-reflective let's power this up and we're looking pretty good okay so that concludes um, part 2.5 of this tutorial and in the next tutorial um, I'll quickly explain um, so you can see this nice little texture pattern here but that's part of the hard pointing um, <laughs> believe it or not but uh, I will explain that in more detail in the next when I cover um, hard pointing and stuff like that for instance the ship needs to be scaled um, the scale of the ship in blender and nifscope etc the, the programs that we use to um, import and export the model actually have no bearing on the size of the model in the nano effects viewer um, that's all controlled by the hard pointing and eventually we'll get to deferred lighting as well okay so stay tuned and check out part three